back everybody it is the working brother back at you with another talk john bosnich is back and even though it looks like he is in the same place where he's usually he's actually coming to us from canada That's the land right. the land of not the free and not the brave the like uh fig leaf maple leaf uh flower country how how's how's life john good to have you back haven't had you on for a while well it's uh it's uh definitely an experience uh being over here in canada again after all these years you know i haven't lived in canada since 1987 so we're looking at some 30 37 years 35 years that's a long time and a lot has changed here uh, uh not, in the good in not, a good way <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't say so uh, i don't even i don't even know where to begin um you sent some photos some, you sent some photos some... you sent some links you sent all kinds of things but first uh, you remember this is a comedy show new subscribers or people who are watching this might not um this is a comedy show nothing we discuss here has anything to do with reality now that that's out of the way um you sent some pictures along uh yes. let's let me see if i can get let me see if i can get uh one of these pictures up here and that should uh, get us going for this topic um the decline of western civilization in one picture pow yeah. now open um <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to tell us well you know i went to uh, i went to uh, to toronto and to montreal to give some uh, to to hold conferences about yesenovats uh for the serbian community and for those who are interested in following um the the information that we are spreading about the seventh death camp because uh most students and uh, even professors of the Holocaust speak about six death camps, six extermination camps. They don't talk about Yasenovats because it doesn't fit the uh, it doesn't fit the standard narrative in which the Nazis of Germany were the main uh, exterminators, and it uh, and it opens the door to the entire discussion of the role of the Vatican and uh, fascist Croatia in the Holocaust. So I started my visit to Canada to do those conferences. <laughs> right into the deep end with John, right into yep. the deep end. Yasinovats, uh, I mean, fans of Nazis, Ustache, all the good stuff. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. <laughs> keep going, John, so we keep start going. Right in, start right in with the, with the heavy duty material. And, uh, and then I started to take a look around at the situation here in Canada. Um, okay, LGBT community is everywhere. You go to Montreal and you have roads painted in, with the LGBT plus Q and so on flag. Uh, we have the Prime Minister of Canada who is uh, divorced from his wife or separated from his wife. We have um, we have a different culture in Canada here than there than there was when I was growing up. I grew up in the sixties and seventies. Um, that era is definitely over. Uh, Canada has folded itself into the military-industrial war complex of the United States and NATO. Hatred for Russians and for Slavs in general—that means uh, Serbs. Um, <laughs> is is at a peak the war media of the united states it has flooded over the border and it's impossible to tell the difference and that's not just because canadians have been sucked in it's uh it's because america owns canada more than 80 percent of our economy is u.s owned now and of course the strategic areas which are not just resources but the strategic area of information and communications is now under the control of, uh, of foreign foreign owners. So 
We've got. Uh, I came. I, I came across this meme the other day before we before we even uh, said we were going to record. Uh, sarcasm mother on Instagram. Trudeau's Canada legal immigrants get two hundred twenty four dollars each day, whereas senior citizens get twenty six dollars a day. Um, yeah, well, you know, I'm so eligible you're occupied, now. I'm... You're 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 occupied by the U.S. as well, is what you're saying? Yeah, of course we are. We're occupied by the U.S. We, Canada has been long occupied by the U.S., but the occupation has been going up and up and up and up. And uh, I'm working now through an interesting book. Uh, let me just grab it. I've got it here. Uh, John, always reaching off screen for props. Yeah. In that well, sense, bring it, hold on. Bringing something, bringing something interesting to your attention. This is the... Memoirs of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. And uh, this is for discussion at our next broadcast, but let me tell you. Is you mean our comedy, I, our next comedy show? Is that his yeah. is, is, is 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 that his father or his grandfather? That's his father. Oh yeah, the then I know. Grandfather. Then I know. There's even video. There's even video of the little one talking about how he went up north uh, with his uh, dad to a secret uh, location with like a secret base with lots of secret people. But yeah, subscribe if you want to see that. Also, thank okay. you for everybody who's bought me a coffee so far. Coffee fuels the show. Um, uh, there you go. I, I, I've got one here, so just there keep you go. Up. Uh, large coffee. size coffee because you got to keep yourself wide awake here in Canada to not slumber off into crazy land. Um, so I'm going through this book for good mm -hmm. comedy material for our next discussion, our next comedy show, when I compare Excellent. the father to the son. Hmm. This, Does the apple fall far from the tree? I, I presume not. The apple. Listen, let me tell you. Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the Prime Minister from 1968 and uh, recurring Prime Minister through the 70s and into the mm -hmm. 80s, was anti-American, anti-globalist, anti-NATO, anti-capitalist, mm -hmm. and actually socialist. The son was physically threatening Putin sending troops uh, to uh, to uh, American-led NATO aggression around the world, planning to send troops to, uh, to Ukraine, providing uh, weapons and support to the empire. The son is the complete inversion of the father, despite the fact that he resembles him and on the social front behaves very similarly to his father. The father divorced. The son is uh, is separated and divorcing from his wife, but the essence of the two men is different. And I and I want to let your 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 your, um, your viewers in on the joke that was played on Canadians. And that joke is this: when Trudeau passed away, he left. Uh, his wife, Margaret, his ex-wife, Margaret Trudeau, to raise the children by herself. Unfortunately, Margaret Trudeau mm, suffered from uh, rapid cycling manic depression and was a very unstable person and had difficult, had a very difficult time raising her children. That's when the U.S. deep state stepped in and provided education for the children and managed to take the son of Pierre Elliott Trudeau and produce today's Justin Trudeau. Uh, that's a joke on the entire Canadian nation. Didn't cost much, and it allowed them to do, if you've read the book Taras Bulba, or if you've seen the movie, that was the essence of the attempt by the Polish against the uh, the Russian uh, the Russian Cossacks. They wanted to take the son of Taras Bulba, attract him with a beautiful woman, and turn him into a Catholic soldier to attack his own father's camp. So we've got the, the joke is on us, and it's all in print, and I'm going to dissect 
the jokes that they played on our nation and how they did it and how Canadians were duped. That's for a future discussion. But uh, maybe I can have you on. Here. Maybe I can have you on with uh, Matt Eheret. <laughs> Eric, um, have you on together and and uh, and discuss those kind of topics because he gets into that kind of stuff as well. That would be an Love interesting. Uh, that would be an interesting back and forth between you two, I'm sure. Um, okay. But considering you dove deep into uh, the Canadian stuff and uh, you've sent me all kinds of links of all kinds of stuff that we've got to cover today, um, I uh, loaded the two Canadian things in the background. So let's get to. Pauli Vera extends uh, lead over Trudeau as best economic manager for Canada, Paul Fines. Okay, Paul? so Pauli Evre is the leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, the Who Conservative now? Party. How did you pronounce Poilievre? it? Pauli Evre. Pauli Vera. Pauli. Pauli. Pauli Evre. Pauli Evre. Pauli Evre. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to pretend I'm not Québécois. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Uh, it's a French name and, uh, and you know. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Québécois. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what we've got here is a repeat of what, uh, what my father's godson, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney did, which is a refocusing of the Conservative Party on Quebec. Uh, the Conservative Party was was traditionally and for a long period of time the Anglo Party of Canada. And uh, whenever the Conservative Party is focused only on the Anglo part of Canada, then then uh, uh, basically the Liberal Party rules. And the Liberal Party is a soft socialist party. When the Conservative Party sinks its roots back in the French Canadian uh, Quebec based population of Canada, then you see the Conservative Party ruling the country and a swing to the right, a swing towards Conservative family values. And that's what's going to happen in the next election. The chances of Trudeau's uh, government continuing are next to zero. Um, by, by coincidence or by fate or by destiny, one of my uh, close friends from university, a fellow who I gave a favor to years ago when I was the student union president at the university that we both attended, um, he couldn't pay for his tuition fees. Uh, and he asked me if he could sell sandwiches that he made himself at the student union building. And I, and I, I authorized that. And he managed to earn enough money to pay for his school and go to school and graduate. Well, as soon as I landed in Canada, we got in touch. And it turns out that he's worth roughly half a billion dollars now. Half a B. That's uh, just a second. Uh, he's, he's, he's worth one second. I'll just get this call off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry Russell. about it. Russell. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so we just go on. Um, he's now worth a half a billion mm -hmm. and he's one of the biggest financiers of the Conservative Party. So this gave me a this this gave me a, an insight into Canadian politics that you simply can't get elsewhere. Um, we're going to have a change of government in Canada and we're going to see Canada not only reasserting traditional family values, we're going to see Canada dropping out of the war effort on Ukraine. And this comes at the same time as France is going to drop out because of the victory of the of the communists and the Marxists and the leftists in the parliamentary elections. So you see you're seeing Canada out, France out, and Germany is already out because of the energy issues. So the, the, the I can't I can't help myself. I got to make fun of the way you say out. As opposed I, to yeah, out, I, I, you, I, I you, you, they're they're gonna they're gonna be oot in a boot. I, I, I have to I, I have to speak with a Canadian accent or I'll lose my passport. So I, <laughs> okay, as as long as as long as it's intended, that's good. Yes, oh yes, you know. oh, sure. We we for Canadians comedic always... effect, for 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 comedic effect. I can talk like this in the British accent as well, but I really yeah. don't like to do it because it really no, no, uh, it puts a lot of stress case. on the face. We, we do this to assert our minimal, tiny, remaining bit of independence from the United States. We can pronounce a few words differently. That's it. 
<laughs> and, and you have gonna, and you have cartoon gonna, money, man. You have cartoon yeah. money, lo- loonies and tooties. Don't forget that. Yeah, we, you, 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 Canada just, will always yeah. have loonies and tooties. In, in yeah, any case, plastic money. plastic money now. Our money's plastic. Oh yeah, so, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. been it's been like that for a while. Um, yeah. Australia was the first to have plastic money. Um, do you want me to play this uh, CBC? Please go ahead. And what up. the wait? Time out. CBC and N. What the hell CBC, is CBC? Uh, it's a news oh, night program. news. Oh, it's night news. Okay, it's night news yeah. or some. Go ahead. Man, CBC and N. No Old comment. Pro Palestinian encampment at McGill University is coming down. This is video provided by student groups on campus. They say private security guards surrounded protesters at the encampment this morning. Police are also on the scene. McGill told the protesters this morning that they were going to be evicted. CBC Sarah Levitt joins us now live from McGill. Uh, So Sarah, what's happening right now? Is this enough? Is this all you want? Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Um, let's, let's, um, Let's dissect that news story, okay? So... (laughs) Uh, so, so what we had was a long-term, hardcore pro-Palestinian demonstration at the leading university in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to McGill. That's that's our Harvard. The Harvard of the North is McGill University. Um, the main donors uh, to McGill University are are Jewish, Jewish Canadians. They, of course, uh, contacted the administration of the university and protested against this massive encampment on the front entry to McGill, which is anti-Israel, um, denouncing Israel's war on the Palestinians as genocide. And basically, you could not enter um, McGill without seeing this. It was a, it was just a, a massive encampment across the university. Um, I went there. I spoke with the with the organizers. Uh, there's there were mm, European Canadians. There were Middle Eastern Canadians. There were Asian Canadians. They were all there at the encampment, um, blocking. Uh, not blocking. You could enter the you could enter the university and pass through the university and leave, but uh, they were making enemies with with the donors who who financed the university in addition to the government grants. Of course, the news story by CBC is done by a woman named Sarah Levitt. Uh, Sarah Levitt, of course, is Jewish. Um, So in Canada, if I, as a Serbian Canadian, were to be given a story about the Balkans or about Serbia, I would automatically be disqualified from, from covering that story because of a conflict of interest. No such rules exist for Jewish Canadians. Jewish Canadians generally are the go-to reporters about Israel, which leads one to ask, why is there one rule for all other Canadians, but when it comes to Israel, there's no conflict of interest for Jewish Canadians? Um, This is just a standing joke, since this is a comedy show. Let's (laughs) let's call it a standing joke on the journalists of the world. Balanced reporting on every subject except Israel. Welcome you, you, to welcome to the North American ecosphere. You're gonna and make what me is, try and find. You're gonna make me try and find something on that subject live while while, while we're recording. I shared something about that earlier today. Yeah. Um, I mean, keep, keep 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 going. Keep going. Well, it's I call it the ecosphere, and what it is is it's the. Israel lobby in the United States, which bounces their uh, media message across uh, across the mainstream lying media, which Trump correctly identified as the lying mainstream media, the lying mm-hmm. MSN. And the lying MSM, uh, MSN is dominated by Jewish Americans and Jewish Canadians. That, that's that's not pr- nothing racist in that. Um, there's a tendency among the best educated, multilingual citizens of the country to cover that region. And of course, the people who speak Hebrew, this people who can cover Israel because they travel there regularly, are one of two groups. Either uh, one of two Semitic groups. They're both Semites. Mm. Either they're Palestinians 
Arabs or they're Jews. Both are Semites. Uh, so when you criticize um, something as being anti-Semitic, it's not anti-Jewish. Although that's what that mean that has come to mean among the various comedians it in the new media. Speak. New speak, new yeah. speak. Uh, it, 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 if you want to give balanced reporting about Israel, you need to have two reporters covering Israel. You need to have a Jew and a Muslim. If you don't have a Jew and a Muslim covering Israel, then the potential for your reporting to be balanced is uh, next to nil. And uh, to say that in Canada is called anti-Semitic, which doesn't mean anti-Semitic because it has nothing against the Palestinians. It's just considered to be anti-Jewish to question why we don't have Muslim reporters covering the situation in Israel and the situation in Gaza. I'll just leave that as a standing joke. And as I do a little bit more research on this, I'll give you some interesting clips that I think uh, I think your um, comic comic audience, uh, uh, audience. comedy show audience will yeah, appreciate the show humor. Audience would, yeah, would love to uh, to hear more about. But let's leave that for the future. I'm planning to speak um, to. Uh, Considering we're talking about definitions, I, I, I got this loaded. I got this loaded. What does smoke a fag mean in, in Canada? Because in uh, British, it means to have a cigarette. In American, it means to kill a homosexual. So yeah, what does smoke I, a fag mean in Canada? I think in Canadian, we've got somewhere in the middle, which is uh, uh, give a blowjob <laughs> to a homosexual. <laughs> 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 how how truly in, Canadian! In, in, in middle middle of the road. How truly <laughs> Canadian of you! Homosexual male. <laughs> uh, how truly Canadian of you! What can I say? Um, also, we got this. This is what I looked up live now. As you were saying with the thing, it's from John, European dissident on Telegram. <clears throat> yeah. Why Biden continues supporting Israel's onslaught in Gaza. Like, no problem right. with that headline. Biden condemns <laughs> Russian brutality <laughs> right after deadly Ukrainian Go strikes. Go back yeah. up there to the photo. Look, look at Biden. Look at Biden. He's sitting in front of an Israeli flag uh, while he makes his comments. I mean, we know... The fact that we're, the, uh, I think some of your viewers have been watching our fellow comedian, uh, Dr. John Mearsheimer, who's all over the internet about Ukraine and the Mearsheimer, situation. Mearsheimer, I'm like not a fan of Mearsheimer. Mearsheimer is like uh, stating the obvious. Mearsheimer is about two years behind the curb. And Mearsheimer, yeah. um, I, like he's doing, I, he's doing his part in the media. Okay, cool. Just yeah. like uh, Ritter he, is. He's, he's, but like both of them. Well, he's, he's a not a translator. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's, oh, he's, how about he's, this, an interpreter? Listen, whatever, whatever he did, whatever he did in his past, like kudos to him. But like uh, regarding Ukraine, shh, I don't want to discuss oh. Mir Mirsheimer. Like uh, okay. smear I mean, shiner, smear <laughs> shiner. You know, uh, like he shines I'm, uh, I'm, smears on I'm people's shoes. On, That's all I I'm give still about on the him. Israel. I'm still on the Israel topic. Um, I'm going to just get you something that you can pop in here uh, Man. Uh, for your Mirror viewers. Shiner. Just a second. It's like yesterday's news, man. Like whatever oh, he no, has to say. It, like, it, it, well, like, we have so many, better, so many more topics to cover that are better, that are already like queued, that don't need, you know, Oh, I, I, I think I, I want to give you, I want to give you um, just a sec, sorry. Just give me like this is this is all I have to say that, like about Smearsheimer. Yeah, Commenters I want to just give it. you something for your uh, <laughs> for your screen for your viewers to see so they can get a better picture of what we're talking about here. You know, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mearsheimer came on the screen long before Ukraine. Uh, yeah, yeah. With, with the critical, really, really important book on the subject of. Uh, on the subject of Israel, and I want to just give you that, give you that, so you can bring it up to your viewers now. I think uh, you have uh, brought it up before, but sure, send it along again. Why not? I think it's coming um, to you now. Did you get it? Hold on, let me see. Uh, no, not yet. 
I still have the other book that you sent, but we'll get to that later. Just a uh, sec. Uh, let's see. There it goes. It's coming to you right now. There you go. There we go. Dave so has... This was this book, uh, which I hope you bring up on your screen there. This yeah, yeah, book hold on. was the tsunami. Mm -hmm. Devastating tsunami that uh, that opened the door to criticism of Israel in North America. It's a detailed analysis of the influence of the Israel lobby on American politics in particular. And it and it goes all the way back to the the, the tail wagging the dog. In other words, Israel wagging America. Mm -hmm. um, this book, The Israel Lobby, uh, created a name for Mearsheimer. Mearsheimer was only known um, among political scientists until then. And he's the one who came up with the very, very valuable statistic of, of the whole book. Okay, the, of the whole book, there's one statistic that needs to be remembered. Jewish Americans are estimated to be somewhere between three and five. Time out. Since you're talking what? about statistics and you're boring myself and probably oh, no, no. some people I, I, who I, are I, listening, time out. Uh, time out. Yeah. I have to tell you another statistic. Like okay. uh, Loki says in his song, Terrorist, more Israelis die of peanut allergies than from Palestinian terrorism. Now continue <laughs> with your irrelevant statistic from Mearsheimer. I, thank you for your joke in the middle of <laughs> It's my, not a joke. You know, it's not a joke. It's real. <laughs> I, I know that. I, it's a joke's on us, bro. The joke is on us. Mm. Uh, uh, so that uh, roughly 3% of the American population who are Jewish Americans donate 60% of the donations to the Democratic Party of the United States. That same... 3% of Americans who are Jewish Americans donate 40% and are the single largest doning, donator ethnic, ethnicity to the Republican Party. So you've got a an ethnic lobby in America, which receives financing from Israel as well, which has the dominant financial influence on both political parties, which is why both Biden and Trump must be pro-Israel if they want to run in a U.S. election. Once again, it's a it's a joke. It's a joke on the American voters. It's a joke on you and me. And it's a joke on anybody who hasn't read the book. Read the book. It's available as an e-version. You'll be up to date on what's going on in America and what's going on with wars in Lebanon, Syria. Iraq, bombing of Iran, and even in Ukraine, where uh, the Jewish Ukrainian president of Ukraine has been attempting everything he can to make a link, uh, a, a link with Israel. One second, I'll just take a call if we can hold ourselves there. Darcy. Right. Good, good. I'm just doing it. Let, let's mute you. We'll mute you. And... Uh... We'll take a second to thank uh, our patrons, right? All right. We muted you, so you had, like, uh, privacy. We only heard it was Darcy, so hello to Darcy if yep. she watches this. Yep. Um, but, yeah, uh, moving on from the Israel lobby and Mersheimer, um, yep. and the fact that, like, obviously they are behind a lot of things, including yep. trolls on the Internet and bot farms. Uh, you wanted me to play this and to get into Assange's... Assange, well, we don't, uh, we don't have to go in. I think what we need to just refer people to is the Gray Zone um, YouTube let me, channel. Let me, let me just let me just play a little insert here to get us talking. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and the Guardian, of course, after using Julian Assange's source material for its journalism, winning awards for it, totally threw him under the bus. They were the worst of the pack, but there are many others, and they won't be forgotten. You know, I hope. You know, I. But there'll be more to say. So the point is, what they're getting at is journalism has failed Julian Assange. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, both both of the hosts of the Grey Zone are Jewish Canadians. So we've got Max Blumenthal and we've got Aaron Maté. Um, 
they are also political activists and they Blumenthal are is a Canadian. I thought he was an American. I think they have dual, I think you may have dual citizenship. Mm. I mean, <laughs> are, uh, are you sure it's not three citizenships, including that like aircraft carrier? Anyway, continue. <laughs> 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 so, so they have they have distinguished themselves as being the conscience of Jewish Canadians who have spoken out against the Israel lobby, against the uh, Israel lobby's influence on the military industrial complex, and against the slaughter of tens of thousands of Palestinians. So anybody who wants to get a truly investigative reporting analysis of the Israel lobby and its effects on North America should go to the gray zone and watch their uh, watch their specials and specifically they should watch what the CIA did to entrap and to eliminate Julian Assange and what the CIA did to silence media around the world and to short circuit the efforts to save Julian Assange. Amazing, astounding material. We don't have the time to go into it, but you just need to watch that show. And uh, I think we should give the link to it down in the comments. I might, yeah, I might link it down in the description of the video that you send along. Um, I'll definitely yeah. have your links up as well. Uh, links to uh, Patreon and uh, that coffee thing. Um, also, yeah. considering uh, you bring up Assange and uh, you're a Canadian, I wanted to uh, introduce you, in case you haven't heard of PressForTruth.ca. Um, he's uh, been doing a lot of reporting, uh, <laughs> how can I say, for a very long time, almost as long as Assange. And I wanted to get his, uh, put his take out there, because he's one who's, let's say... That is, as you can tell by the title of this video, the fact that the intelligence asset, Julian Assange, has just completed his mission. Now, if you ask most people in alternative media what are their views on Julian Assange, most of them will tell you that <clears throat> this guy's a, a hero, you know, that he's a champion of free speech. And I think just the fact that the alternative media has embraced and trusted WikiLeaks as a source was done by design and today in this video i'm going to explain how this was done why this was done so he gets into basically saying that by the creation of wikileaks back then and him as like this you know figure um everybody else who maybe had uh, you know intentions or plans of doing like a, you know leak gathering was basically yeah. muted out of the out of the existence and all attention and focus was given to them and they had like a gatekeeper access to like you know all this information and all these quote unquote leaks how well, would you take let, that um i i just want to check um of course want you want to check. check. I'm going to use this. I'm going to just check and see if I'm using this um, the VPN <laughs> to make yeah. sure to make sure that nobody's listening. <laughs> no VPN. No need VPN. Let them come for me. I'd love to see. You. What are you sending? What is this straw man argument? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We we, we know what a so, straw man argument is. I, I, a lot I think of arguments. I think that's what I think that's what this fellow is doing. Um, my take on it is... I challenge and, and, you to reach out to him, considering you're in Canada and he's in Canada. I can't remember where he's at, where he's at but I'll, I'll send you some of his stuff and I challenge you to reach out to him. Please, please do. Why do, why do I say that? Because, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the same person who led the journalists to... Uh, to to help me free Bobby Fischer in Japan, later became the head of the committee to free Julian Assange. So I know I know these people personally. I know, they lived in my house. They 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 stayed in Japan. They came to Japan. We sued the Japanese government. We denounced NATO. These guys are legit. Now, if they worked to free Julian for more than a decade 
and they worked at it around the clock and they weren't paid uh, anywhere near what they would have been paid had they been journalists, we can either presume that they're being bribed by somebody, which I know is not the case, or that they are actually altruistic defenders of freedom of speech. Um, my opinion of Julian Assange is very positive. I believe that what he did exposed the U.S. killing machine. And uh, as for WikiLeaks, um, I know for a fact that WikiLeaks exposed a lot of what we have proven in Serbia to have been the, sh the shenanigans and the uh, machinations of the of the military industrial complex, the entry of America into our church via uh, Bishop. The best uh, lies are full of truth. The best lies are full of bits look, of truth. Um, Vladika Irine Dobrievich of the Serbian Orthodox Church was exposed by WikiLeaks as being a US intelligence asset. I knew that. I told the Serbian Unity Congress that. I told our politicians that, and I told our public that. But it required the leaks from WikiLeaks to prove it. And now we've got the Serbian Unity Congress who knew that. We've got the uh, the Serbian National Defense who knows that. And we've got all of the ministries of Serbia who know that. That we had a bishop, and he's still, a, I don't think he's been defrocked, although he should be. But I, I, I believe that we have still a bishop who was on the U.S., uh, let's say, work roster, spying on our country and working against the national interests of Serbia. Um, that was, that is, was released and revealed by WikiLeaks confirming what I had released, but very few people believed it. We, now we, in, in we discussed this topic. We discussed this topic in previous talks with you and, and, yeah. and you are touch with the, with the Serbian Congress, even in the, in the States. And this yes. is a perfect segue. Oh, by the way, subscribers, viewers, uh, just so you know, John and I uh, agreed that I'm going to keep cutting him off. So if, if you have any problems, leave a comment. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, we're going to keep cutting each other off because we have a lot of th stuff, sh stuff to get through, um, including the segue, uh, John saw this. These are exclusive photos by John. L'Eglise de Saint James United, you Saint James United Church, which is united um, with a strip club. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you want to tell I, us? I, I grew up here in Eastern Canada, where I am now, and uh, my father, uh, as as a as a survivor of the war against fascist Croatia um, refused to enter a Catholic church because of the Vatican cover-up of the Ustasha and so on. And, uh, and of course, he, he would not marry a Catholic. He married my mother, who was uh, partially of Serbian origin from, from the Sorbs of Eastern Germany. It's a Serb Serbia's lost tribe. And my mother was raised as a Protestant in the uh, what became the United Church of Canada. And the United Church of Canada was a combination of Methodists, um, Episcopalians, uh, Anglicans, and, um, sorry, one more church uh, from Presbyterians from Scotland. So... This church, the United Church of Canada, was a was a united Protestant church, and their main church is in downtown Montreal. So I I went I went on my travels he, to Eastern Canada. I went through Montreal, and I thought, okay, I'll go. It's on the main street of downtown Montreal. I thought I'll go there and uh, and uh, check it out. Well, there it is. There's the church, but on the side of the church, there's a little kind of alcohol serving. Uh, cabaret with women in skimpy uh, miniskirts. Uh, and then at the back, there's a, looks like a strip club cabaret uh, with, with gangsta, gangsta boys going in there. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I've got another photo there. Check, check the next one. 
Uh, unbelievable. Zoom in there. <laughs> this is a nightclub cabaret. Montreal. <laughs> At the center of the Protestant United Church of Canada. What, what, uh, unless they ran a brothel directly out of the church, they couldn't go beyond this. So if people ask you if, uh, there it is, unbelievable. Um, it, this, this is, this is the end of it, it doesn't surprise me. It's that the end. Surprise me. That's the end of traditional, conservative, uh, church-going Protestantism in Canada. When you can hold a cabaret and put it in a historic church and have no outcry and no complaint, then we've reached the end. And, uh, and, and uh, it's not that I'm a big Bible pounder, but if anybody proposed putting a nightclub and cabaret in Svetisava Temple in Belgrade, I would be among the Serbs who would be objecting to that. How about a betting shop? <laughs> Incredible. I mean, this when, when, you, when, you put, when you put this perspective on things, it's not, it's not surprising that we've got uh, the mess that we have in Canada, the, the complete collapse of the national interest as we're literally prostituting our state to America. We're selling our resources under value. We ship our wood, our oil, our coal, our gas, our water to the states. We do not do any value added. We just give it to them raw at the minimum price. They sell it back to us. We buy chairs here in Canada. I'm sitting on a chair made in the USA with Canadian wood. We have Oil Capitalism at its finest, man. Capitalism at its finest. But you've got to be a dummy and you've got to be a, a slow witted to let that happen to you. And that's what we've had happen here in Canada. It's no wonder that hundreds of thousands of Serbs have started migrating back to Serbia from Canada. First, they didn't want to get uh, injected with unknown substances that have raised the death rate of. Uh, They're not, <laughs> They're not unknown anymore. They're not unknown anymore. We know now. We know now what it was. I, <laughs> I was not. I was not vaccinated, and I refuse mm -hmm. to let my two uh, sons, who are both in the age group of those most harmed by those injections, um, one is 23 and one is 22, and now we've got a spike in the death of young males who received multiple injections. I have no the, idea what you're talking about. This is all news to me. Neither do I. Hey, it's all just another joke on us. And we the Russian propaganda. Laughing. Russian propaganda. Right. Well, let's laugh. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it, didn't there, didn't the Russian see? Ministry of Defense do a brief on, like, on, on, on bioweapons and stuff like that? Anyway, um, we've been going for 43 minutes and 31 seconds, officially. Um, We've got a lot more things to get into. Come and at me! Come at me! Give me some more we're, jokes. <laughs> we're 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 gonna we're gonna end up splitting this into two talks. Uh, but yep. before we sign off, I just want to take a moment, and I want to say that uh, your opinion matters. And when you find me on Telegram, uh, you can participate in polls. Um, there is the link to Telegram, uh, also in the description. Uh, the poll upcoming. Working Brother Tales. You're the first to hear it, John. Um, okay. I'm going to be telling tales. And as you may know, telling a tale can mean one of two things. It can mean recounting, you know, what happened. And also telling a fib or like <laughs> making or stuff up. Fiction, so fiction. In the, in the sense of a comedy channel, they're going to be recounts of stories that I feel like I need to tell people about, they can be, you know, tales. F uh, fake uh, stories, maybe. Or maybe not. Cool. Uh, um, I, I mean, 
I'll bring you some from Canada that you will you'd be shocked. I mean, well, I have I, I have tales I know I'm, uh, from Canada as well. <laughs> I, I know I'm in competition here with my with my fellow Bosnich clan member Drago. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get you some interesting stuff from Canada that's gonna make people really laugh because I grew up here. Mm -hmm. I was raised here, and I'm shocked. I'm going to get you stuff that uh, people won't believe no matter what you tell them. Okay? Before we'll have, before, we'll have before more, we call more this listen, coming from Canada than there's ever been. Before we before we call this uh, an episode or a talk um, and we get into the next recording, is there anything that you want to say to viewers? Well, I I, I think that uh, I think that the uh, the time has come for people to act on the things that they think are funny and explain that, uh, you know, if there's a joke being played on people in the Western world, it's a joke on us. And if we aren't enjoying it, we should stop it. A lot of people are not enjoying seeing their children and other people losing their jobs, joining the military and shipping off to uh, Iraq, uh, shipping off to Afghanistan and so on. All of this is a part of a military industrial entertainment complex that packages it all for you through Hollywood and through, well, you call it WT Tales. I call it Warner Brother Looney Tunes. <laughs> WB, WB. Yeah, keep yeah. Your eyes keep, keep your eyes tuned to the Looney Tunes. <laughs> That's right. I, I think you should call it WB Looney Tunes. It's but, possible. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a commenter there was a commenter that actually that actually made the uh, made a joke exactly about that. Um, in any case, John, thank you for sticking around. It's been a pleasure and an honor as always. Uh, everybody who stuck around to the end, thank you. Let's get this music going. Thank you. Um, We'll be back momentarily. Uh, everybody, see you around. <laughs>